What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I wanna share two basic ways you can optimize or get more detail from your smoke simulation renders inside of Blender. Now these are fairly beginner rendering tips. However, a lot of the time they end up being overlooked and sometimes I'll have a fairly detailed simulation and I'm wondering why it isn't looking as realistic as it should. And these two simple render setting changes have helped me a lot in my rendering process. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is going to be the scene we are going to be evaluating here. I've used our chaos add-on to create some kind of smoke plume effect emitting from our 360 ground burst operator here. And then we just have a few basic settings on our chaos fire shader. Now these two tips I'm going to share are not specific to chaos, so don't worry about that. They'll also work in any simulations you create inside of Blender as well. Chaos is just the way that I typically create simulations inside of Blender. So I'll go ahead and go into render view here on around frame 27. So we can see we have some fire and smoke kind of mixed together here from our preview of the simulation. And I have a fairly medium resolution simulation here. It's not super detailed. However, it's not super low res either. I have our standard resolution divisions at 96 and I've up it by two with the noise option here. And also to see the smoke better in this example, I've added a very simple area light side lighting our smoke from one angle just so we can see the detail a bit better. So I'll just go into rendered view really quick. I'll go to maybe frame 34 just so we have a little mixture of smoke and fire. So this is going to be the frame we're going to be working on. And right now I'm just using the default rendering settings here inside of Blender with the Cycles rendering engine. But I'll just show you guys the two parameters that I often change in order to either speed up my workflow or add a little bit more detail given the resolution of the simulation. So obviously this isn't super high res, but it should provide a pretty good example for the settings that we're changing. The two settings I want to adjust are in our Render Properties tab here. And the first one I recommend you play around with is your Volume Bounces under the Light Paths tab here. And at its default, it will be set at zero. But the more you increase this number, the more your various light sources that hit your smoke volume are actually going to bounce around that smoke volume within it. So if I increase this to one, what that means is that our light is going to bounce into our smoke and then scatter around the simulation itself. So the higher we increase this, the more accurate that light is going to bounce around the volumetrics. And this is really important for smoke that's not very dense, like a dust cloud of some sort, because you really need that light to bounce around so that the actual dust simulation kind of self illuminates itself. So I usually increase this to at least two, but of course, if your simulation is off in the distance or is a very thick smoke, it's often not quite as necessary. But again, all this setting is going to do is it's just going to make sure that when, for example, this light hits a portion of the smoke, that light ray is actually going to bounce around and illuminate other parts of the smoke as well. So that's the first setting I recommend you guys play around with. Increase it for a little bit more realistic look, or you can decrease it all the way to zero for a faster render time. So on the screen right now, I'll put a side-by-side -side comparison on what this setting is actually doing. And hopefully that'll give you an idea of how the smoke is actually being illuminated with this parameter. So that's our first setting that I recommend you play around with. The second one you can play around with is under the volumes tab here. And this one's a little bit trickier to explain, but essentially by decreasing this step rate render, Blender is going to attempt to render your smoke with more detail. You have your step rate render option here. So this is going to affect how your smoke is being rendered. And then right below it, you can control how you can view this in the viewport. So the one that really matters when you're exporting your data is this top one right here, but this can give you an idea in the preview window what this parameter is actually doing. So as I mentioned, if you reduce this number, Blender is going to attempt to render your smoke in more detail. But another thing you can do is actually increase this number to see if you can decrease your render time without losing too much detail. So for the sake of an example here, I'll just increase this to 10. And you can see that all of a sudden, now our smoke is looking a little bit more uniform. So it's not looking nearly as detailed. However, it rendered much quicker in the viewport versus if we bring this number all the way down to, for example, 0.1. Now all of a sudden it's taking far longer to render. However, once it actually does render, you're going to see the detail of your simulation much better. So in a second here, I'll put a side-by-side -side comparison on our screen, but you can notice that you're, we're actually seeing the various shadows in the simulation much better once we bring this number a lot lower. However, obviously it's taking way longer to render as well, but this is a really important parameter to adjust because oftentimes, especially when it comes to fire simulation, part of the detail of the fire itself, like in this case, you know, these flames up here, is actually how the smoke is overlaid with the fire. So if this number is too high, then everything is gonna look way too uniform and gonna lack a lot of detail. So again, I'll show you guys the value at 10, or maybe just for the sake of this example, maybe we'll go to like 50 
and you'll really see that you're losing a lot of detail when you increase this number. However, if you increase it a little bit, and for example, if your simulation is off in the distance, you'll notice that uh, you can actually get away with a little bit and not take nearly as much time rendering out your simulation. So you can see you're actually losing that large scale detail look on your smoke because it's actually not rendering the smoke with as much detail. And our smoke is also not carving up our fire nearly as much in this example. Now a lot of the time the default works, so I'll just bring this back down to one, but you can either increase this number for a faster render or you can decrease it if it's actually making your render look more detailed. Finally, right below our step rate render parameter is our maximum steps parameter. And these two parameters are actually related. Obviously, that's why they're in the same tab. This parameter right here is actually just going to control how many times your step rate is going to go through your render and add that extra layer of detail. So both of these kind of work together, but I found that this one you can actually decrease quite a bit without losing a lot of detail, more so than the step rate render. So we can actually bring this down to say 500 and still get a fairly similar result and save a lot of render time. So wait this out a little bit. You can see we're still getting a fairly detailed simulation based on our initial resolution divisions. Again, we've reduced that by half, which is going to decrease the amount of time we spend rendering quite a bit. Now, there are a lot more tips I can give you guys on rendering out volumetrics, but these two aspects of adjusting your volume steps, in addition to changing the volume bounces, are fairly straightforward ways to optimize your volume renders effectively. And a lot of the time, in my experience, you have a fairly high resolution simulation, but you're not actually getting what you want out of it, and you're trying to figure out why it doesn't look as good as it should. So play around with these two settings, guys. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.